Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Daily Race. Today is Tuesday, May 31st, 2022, and we're ready to get rolling today, y'all. Yes, we are. Hey, today is actually a pretty cool day. Um, if you didn't know, it's actually National Smile Day today. That's right. Today is National Smile Day today, and ha, I'm getting a head start on the game right now. 6 a.m., let's go. And I know some of y'all, you've you been listening to this early in the morning, you're like, Pastor, way too early to be smiling like that right now, right? <laughs> some of y'all are like, Pastor, I need to get my second cup of coffee first before I start smiling like that. But hey, y'all, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, and I'm trying to get your day started out right. So with National Smile Day being today, hey, I'm all in, y'all. I hope you are as well. Let's go. So it's going to be a great day today, as so we're going to spend some time in God's Word. We're going to go ahead and get running today. Um, we're going to, you know, be helping Pastor Ryan out here. We've got a few more days, so we'll be on the daily race before Pastor Ryan hops on back in the game, and I'm sure he's going to be smiling as well, because he got a couple-week break, a little vacation, rested up, and ready to run again. So, as we are walking through the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and 1st and 2nd Chronicles, today, I'm gonna read to you about when God shows up. When God shows up today. Uh, when Solomon's kinda all finished with the temple right here. So, hey, check this out. I'm gonna be in 2nd Chronicles chapter seven. Let me get started right now in verse one as we begin seeing what happens here when the temple's all completed. It says, when Solomon finished praying, Fire flashed down from heaven and burned up the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices, and the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. Now, yesterday I was reading through the King's account, and now I'm reading through the Second Chronicles account, and man, here's what's cool right here. When Solomon finished, he's praying, all of a sudden this fire flashes down from heaven. This was God's way of saying, I see you, I'm in, I like what you guys have done here. Boom, shakalaka, right? Fire flashes down from heaven and they know that God has put his seal on this temple right here. Now, fire flashing down from heaven, does that sound familiar to you? Well, just a few short years later, eventually, Elijah the prophet would be on the scene. And when Elijah the prophet was on the scene, what happened? Well, he had this showdown on Mount Carmel where he challenged the prophets of Baal. And he said, hey, let's both build altars and put sacrifices on them. And we want to see whose fire, you know, the God will actually serve. Whoever is the true God, the God of the world, the true God is going to light on fire from heaven, you know, the, the altar. He said, man, they'll just light on fire. And so I think Elijah, Elijah cheated, y'all. He had a little advantage. He had a little insight, didn't he? No, maybe, maybe not cheated. It's probably a strong word. But Elijah knew from the past that his God would show up in an amazing way. So when Elijah lit his offer and the other... Prophets of Baal lit their offer. Nothing happened to the prophets of Baal, but Elijah's offer, fire whoo, flashed down from heaven. It struck Elijah's altar on fire, and people knew at that moment the Lord was God. You see, in the same way, back here, when fire flashed down from heaven, they knew this was a pretty crazy sign. God was on their side. He was doing something amazing. This was so amazing that people got so excited. Look what they went on to do. It says in verse 4, Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices to the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. And so the king and all the people dedicated the temple of God. 120,000 sheep and goats, 20,000 cattle. This is a big old offering that's offered to God. Such a huge offering that says, Then the priests took their assigned positions and so did the Levites who were singing, His faithful love endures forever. They accompanied the singing with music from the instruments King David had made from praising the Lord. Across from the Levites, the priests blew the trumpets while all Israel stood. Everybody's celebrating right now. This is a big deal. A big worship service is going on right now. People are singing. People are calling out to God. People are playing instruments. Things are going amazing right now. People are so excited dedicating this temple to the Lord. Matter of fact, this actually went on. It was a 15-day deal that happened right here. You had the seven days where they dedicated the altar. You had the seven days for the festival of shelters and then a closing ceremony day. So 15 days worth. Matter of fact, that's why when they sacrificed so many sheep and cattle, that's what the people ate for those 15 days. They didn't have freezers and refrigerators to store all the meat. They just went to town on it all. They had a big feast. And what happened at the end of that big feast? We read this, verse 10. Then at the end of the celebration, Solomon sent the people home. They were all joyful and glad because the Lord had been so good to David and to Solomon and to his people Israel. What did it say? 
He sent them home and they were all joyful and glad. That's another way of saying they went home fat and happy, y'all. They had a good day, a good couple of weeks. It was, hey, it was National Smile Day up in Israel right there as well, right? They were smiling. They were so excited about what God had done. They couldn't wait to celebrate and share that with everybody in the community, the amazing things of God. And what's so cool is after that, after that time happened, it was a little while later, look at what it says in verse 11. It says, so Solomon finished the temple of the Lord as well as the royal palace. So this took a little while to finish the royal palace as well. So although this is written like right after this inside the Bible, like the very next verses, we know it's probably a span of at least 13 years or so later after that, because after he had built the palace as well, that this was a, a big deal. After that had happened, it says, he completed everything as he planned to do in the construction of the temple and the palace. Then one night, the Lord appeared to Solomon. So then God shows up again. You know, God showed up before Solomon began building the temple. He said, hey, ask for whatever you want. And Solomon said, just give me wisdom to lead these people of yours. And God said, I'm gonna give you wisdom and everything else that comes with it too. So he had that in the middle of building the temple, Solomon prays to God and he sees that God is still with him and God is still at work. And after Solomon got done building the temple, the fire flashed down, he knew God was there. But now God shows up again and God speaks to him again. God speaks to Solomon. Look at what God says to Solomon in this key moment. He says, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this temple as the place for making sacrifices. At times, I may shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. God is saying this. God is saying there's going to be some times where bad things come your direction. There'll be times where your people aren't listening to me. There'll be times your people are off doing their own thing. And what's going to happen? I may shut up the heavens. I may cause no rain to fall down, which means the crops are going to suffer. It's going to be very difficult for your people. Or I may send grasshoppers to come and devour the crops. Once again, that's going to mess with your people. God is saying some tough things may come your direction. I may send plagues your direction. I may allow these tough things to happen. If your people aren't listening, if they aren't paying attention, if they're going astray, I may allow bad things to happen to your people. But then he tells them this. Then, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. That verse right there might be one you've heard before in the book of Second Chronicles, probably the most famous verse inside of it. God is telling his people that, you know what? Your people may go astray. They may turn. They may go a different direction. And he says, then bad things may come their way, but he gives them a promise. He says, but then, if your people will, first of all, what? Humble themselves. Humility, that's the first step towards really turning back towards God. Humility is the first step of saying, you know what? Man, I was, I was wrong and you were right. We have to humble ourselves if we want to be exalted. We got to humble ourselves first. Or otherwise, God says, we, we stand up in pride. We will be humbled. So we got to humble ourselves. God says, if you will humbly come to me, and what? If you will pray and you'll seek my face, God is looking for people who will call out to him, people who will pray to him, people who will acknowledge him, people who acknowledge that he is God and they are not, people who will realize their faults, their shortcomings and say, God, I messed up this time. We need your help. He says, if my people will do that, they'll humble themselves. If they'll pray and seek my face, and then what's the key part of this? And then turn from their wicked ways. This is what it looks like when true repentance happens. It isn't just lip service, it's heart service. It isn't just saying, yeah, I'm gonna do better. It's no, actually doing better. It isn't just trying, it's actually living this out. If my people will then turn from their wicked ways, if they will do the right thing, if they will stop living the ways of the world and start living my ways, then what will I do? I'll restore their land. I'll forgive their sins and I'll restore their land. He'll forgive us for the things we've done wrong. He'll restore our land. You see, this wasn't something that was just good for the Israelites to hear thousands of years ago. Man, this is something we need to be hearing today and be reminded about no matter what country we live in. Because we live in the United States of America, I can only speak for our country at this time and say, man, we've made some poor decisions over time. We've made some decisions that would be very dishonorable to God. There's some things we do as a nation that I'm sure that God isn't looking down from heaven and having a national smile day and smiling about. Some things that we've done that have really dishonored his name, that have really made his name look bad. And, and sometimes we call this, you know, you know, America's country or God's country or, you know, you know, in God we trust. And yet some things we do 
that really don't make it seem like we trust in God, but we trust in ourselves. There's some things we've done that would just really, uh, really, it would really make God not happy or not pleased with us. And these things that we've done that maybe we didn't do personally, but we as a nation have done, man, that's, that's some tough things. We used to be called a Christian nation, and now a lot of people would say, well, you guys are a post-Christian nation, looking at what you're doing and the way you're living right now. My hope is that we as a nation would realize passages like this and live these things out, that we would come and humble ourselves before God, admitting our faults, admitting our flaws, admitting our failures, saying, God, we've messed up in a lot of different areas in a lot of different ways. And change, it starts by looking in the mirror. Change, it starts with me. That if you and I would start this process of humbling ourselves and if God's family, his bride, the church would begin to humble ourselves and watch what God could do and ask for for forgiveness and ask God, tell him that we're sorry. What could happen if our nation saw that and they took on as well? What could happen if God's people stood before him, then humbled themselves and asked for forgiveness? What could happen? What might God do as a result? You see, this right here, this is when big major revolutions happen. This is when big spiritual revitalizations happen. This right here is when God says, all right, my stamp of approval is on my people. Amazing things happen spiritually when God's people step up to the plate and we begin to honor God in the ways that the world should and the world could. The world won't know what to do until they take our cues and they see what we're willing to do for our amazing God. That's my hope today is that you and I would humble ourselves. We would call out to God. We would ask forgiveness, first of all, personally for our own sins and restoration, maybe with our family as well. And then we branch out from there to eventually our entire country our entire country live in the way that we should and that we could. And I guarantee you what, if our country would all do that, it would make a huge difference. And I imagine that because of the position we're in as a superpower in the world, the world would take notice of the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, y'all. How about you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for your great love for us, for your great love for allowing us to live in a free country, Lord. Thank you so much that we get a chance to honor you, to live our lives for you. And God, I pray that our lives for you would be more than lip service, it would be heart service, Lord. That God, in any areas where we've fallen short, please, I pray that you would uh, just hear our cries, hear our calls out to you, hear our prayers to you as we turn our hearts back to you. In the same way that you told Solomon you'd be there with his people if they did this, will you be here with our people? And even those who are following with us or tracking with us from different countries today, be with them as well, God. We know that you're with them. Let your presence be made known and show them that if we're really willing to humble ourselves, you will show up in amazing ways and we will see you at work and you will forgive us and restore our land. Heal our land, God, and let us be a beacon of light for you, a beacon of light that shows the world what it could look like and what it should look like when your people are following you with all their heart their soul, their mind, and their strength. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all, it's time to go ahead and get it out on your Tuesday. Hope you're able to get around a whole lot of people today and they get a chance to see you smile. That's right. Let's go represent on National Smile Day today because we got something to smile about. We're representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. He's got us. He's got our back. He's got our front. He's got our sides as well. He's got you today. So go out and smile and give him some glory and let's point people to the amazing God that we serve. It's going to be a great day. I'm your boy. Holla at your boy. Holla.